Welcome back to Team Brief podcast, which this month comes from Wrightington Hospital and specifically at the new fertility centre, the Hewitt unit. Now I'm going to be meeting the lead for the service, Phil Harris, and he's going to be explaining it to me. And at the end, I'll have the usual three quiz questions. Firstly, how many patients have been here since the unit opened? Secondly, what's the name of the machine that tests for male fertility? And thirdly, what's behind the name of the pot group 10cc? December was a good month for our main measures of quality. If I start with mortality, the most recent figure we have is for October last year, which was a very good 92.8, taking our total for the year to date to 91.4, significantly below the NHS average. And then if we look at infection rates, on MRSA, we're very nearly up to 500 days since the last bloodstream infection, which is massively impressive. And on C. diff, there was just one case in December, taking the year to date to 11. Now that's against a control maximum of 14. And as you can see from this chart, it continues the year on year reduction, which we've seen for many, many years. So the total number of harms then, if we take that one serious infection, there was unfortunately one never event, two serious falls, and one case of ventilator acquired pneumonia. So that gives us five harms for the month, which is a respectable figure. And finally, if I move on to the caring measures, the monthly inpatient survey, which is conducted by volunteers, December was the best month we have ever had. And you can see in this chart here, the right hand column, almost everyone is green and the average positive score is over 95%. So well done to everybody that's got these measures of quality going so well in the organisation. The picture on the Trust's performance is a bit more mixed. One of the main measures, of course, is A&E. And you can see from this chart here that we remain one of the best performing departments, certainly in the whole of Greater Manchester and indeed in the whole of the country. But in December, we missed the 95% target and we are continuing to struggle as we get into January. Almost all of our other major targets, though, have been achieved and we're particularly outstanding for our performance on cancer waiting times. And now finance, which is the one area where the Trust is really challenged. And at the three-quarter way stage of the year, we've got a £4.6 million deficit. Now, a little bit of that is through income loss, through things like theatres being out of work, but most of it is because of excess expenditure, and most of that is the amount of money that we're spending on temporary staff nearly £15 million a year, where we simply can't recruit substantive staff. At the moment, it looks as though the year-end picture is going to be a deficit of £6 million, which is one of the worst that the Trust has ever experienced. And it's not really much comfort to know that other Trusts are all in the same boat, or even worse. I'm now in the fertility laboratory, which is where they have a whole load of very sophisticated equipment that helps to measure fertility and sperm count, and this is what you can see in this picture here. Now, sophisticated equipment is what I want to talk about next, because 2016 is the year that we begin to move to our massive investment in the major new IT system, the new HIS project. Now, there's a vast range of events which you'll see publicised in the written team brief, through global emails and through all sorts of other communications, but what I really want people to be aware is that this is the big change that is happening this year. I now want to tell you about Sean Dainty, who many of you know is our very popular head of portering services in the Trust. Now, unfortunately, on holiday, Sean was recently taken very, very ill whilst overseas and has been in hospital ever since. The latest news is quite encouraging and we hope that he'll be able to come home before too long. But the whole experience has way exceeded what his insurance would provide for himself and his family. So Sean's friends have organised a fundraising event on the 26th of February in the Swinley Club, which I think is a fantastic initiative to take and I'd like to support it and encourage you to as well. Here I am with Mr Phil Harris, who is the clinical lead for the fertility service within the Trust. And indeed this year, Phil celebrates his 20th year working at WWL. So Phil, first of all, tell me what do you do here? Well, we provide a full fertility service. We, um, we see patients from the very start of their, their pathway, so they're referred by the GPs. Fertility, infertility problems affects one in six to seven couples. Um, so they'll have the basic investigations, and then as required, they'll go on to different treatments. 
And the nice thing about, about our unit is that we're licensed by the Human Fertilisation Embryology Authority. We provide licensed treatments such as intrauterine insemination. And we also provide a satellite IVF and ICSI service. So patients are managed through, through uh, the unit here and they'll just have um, part of their uh, treatment at our satellite centres at uh, the Hewitt Fertility Centre. So, uh, so we, we provide secondary and tertiary fertility services. Okay. And clearly this is a new unit at Wrightington. What, what are you most proud of here? Well, apart from being the first gynaecologist at Wrightington, um, we have a beautiful facility for NHS and private patients. Um, and they're getting top class accommodation, beautiful surroundings, and uh, I've got a fabulous team to look after them. So what are the main problems and pressures that you face? I think the biggest problem that we face at the moment is the postcode lottery. So the, the CCGs all have very, very differing um, uh, funding, um, funding requirements mm. and it uh, makes life very, very difficult. Okay. So now my three quiz questions. First of all, um, since the unit opened, how many patients have come through the doors? We've had uh, about 1,200 new patients, uh, which attracts an awful lot of work from outside of the area. Mm -hmm. Very good. And secondly, um, you have a machine here which effectively analyses male fertility. What's that called? Well, you think it destroys them, but it's actually called the sperminator. <laughs> and then on the same theme, um, I believe that you can help me with why the band 10cc was given that name. Well, it was a, a male macho thing. They thought that nine cc's was uh, normal s sperm volume, um, so they thought they'd go one extra. <laughs> <laughs> don't say you don't learn anything on Team Brief. Thank you.